Hey everybody, after a lot of hard physical labor, <laughs> I am moved to a completely different place in here in another room and I'll go into that probably in another video about that. But I just wanted to catch up with some articles that I had saved a while ago this past week and had no time at all to do any of my video work. So I hope you'll forgive me. Um, the situation as it stands is that there's now a big gaping hole in the ceiling in the entryway and the sheetrock is completely rotting away and uh, the room that I was in was starting to smell like a uh, wet wallboard. So I'm hopefully in a place where I'm safe now, I don't know. Last night we got a lot of snow. We got such a lot of snow last night, it was unbelievable. It started raining and then it started snowing and uh, we got so much snow. I, I know it's well over a foot that we got probably. Uh, it's about from the ground um, about three inches under my knee. So this is the most snow that we've had so far. And this is on top of having the storm Elliot which caused the pipes to burst, as you know, which caused me to have to move. So I spent my Christmas holiday hauling stuff from one place to another. As you can imagine, it was very physically draining, especially when you're battling diabetes and neuropathy in your feet. And uh, I really pretty much am exhausted from it. I'll have to go into more detail and do a separate video about what happened that day but today I wanted to talk about something I had intended to talk about earlier in the week which was this story in the news that they are going to be excavating the part of the pool of Siloam or Shiloh that has not been unearthed in 2000 years and they have only found an excavated part of the pool and the other part of the pool has been underneath the ground under a garden that's owned by a Greek Orthodox Church. So I wanted to tell you a little bit of the story of how they found the pool in 2004 and this updated article saying that they're going to be finally after 2,000 years excavating the rest of the pool. Can you imagine what they're going to find? when they dig down in this dirt that hasn't been touched in 2,000 years and it's pretty deep it's I don't know how deep but in the articles we'll get into it and we'll see what they say um, I hope you don't mind because it's so cold outside with the snow I'm just wearing my hood right now and uh, I don't usually do that inside but I just want to um, do it for right now to warm myself. But NBC News had reported on the archaeological find. The, the word Siloam is the Greek form of Shiloach, which is the Hebrew name of the pool. And in the city of David, if you know, it's kind of shaped like the state of Florida, kind of like a, a peninsula. At the very tip of this peninsula, of the city of David, was the King's Garden. And right next to the King's Garden is where they discovered the pool. And this is where Jesus sent the blind man to wash his eyes after he put clay on them and he could then see. So this is very significant for right now. And let's just talk about the news article that came out in 2004. So the article says, archaeologists in Jerusalem have identified the remains of the Shiloh pool, the Siloam pool, where the Bible says, Jesus miraculously cured a man's blindness. Water flows through the site 
where archaeologists believe they have uncovered the remains of the Shiloh pool in the Silwan neighborhood of East Jerusalem. And that was back then, that was Thursday. It was written December 23rd of 2004. And the pool was used by Jews for ritual immersion from about 50 BC to 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple. So it's been covered up since that time. Archaeologists in Jerusalem have identified the remains of the Siloam pool where the Bible says Jesus miraculously cured a man's blindness, researchers said, underlining a stirring link between the works of Jesus and ancient Jewish rituals. The archaeologists were slowly digging out the pool where water still runs tucked away in what is now the Arab neighborhood of Silwan. It was used by Jews for ritual immersion for about 120 years until the year 70 when the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple. Many of Jesus' acts are directly linked to Jewish rituals and the miracle of the blind man is an example. According to the Bible, the man was undergoing ritual immersion in the Siloam pool for entry into the temple compound and Jesus used the occasion to cure his blindness. And of course they were 100% sure that this was the pool and the archaeologists revealed the pool's 50 yard, 50 meter length and channel that brought in water from the Silwan Spring. In the past week a section of Stone Road that led from the pool to the Jerusalem temple was uncovered. Now I'm reading back from in 2004 here. An artist's impression of the Siloam pool in Jerusalem on the basis of new excavations by archaeologists in East Jerusalem, December 23, 2004. Archaeologists in Jerusalem have unearthed a paved assembly area and water channel at the site of the pool where Christians know that Jesus gave sight to a blind man. Israel Antiquities Authority said um, that Thursday, the discovery allowed them to build a better picture of what the Siloam pool might have looked like nearly 2,000 years ago, suggesting it was meant for ritual immersion rather than for use as a reservoir as some have thought. The Siloam Pool is mentioned in the Bible's New Testament as the place where Jesus performed the miracle of giving sight to a man who was blind from birth, first anointing his eyes with clay and then telling him to wash in the pool. The moment that we revealed and discovered this four months ago, this was back in December 23rd of 2004, we were 100% sure it was the Shiloh Pool, said archaeologist Eli Shukron. We know today that the Siloam Pool is connected to the Temple Mount. There is a road that connects the two elements. The entire system is clearer today, he said. Stephen Penn, a Bible scholar, said the pool's waters were considered so pristine they could purify even a leper. Penn said that Jesus likely chose to cure the blind man using the purest water available because people with any disabilities were barred from the temple. The whole point is that people will not only be healed physically, but also healed spiritually, he said. This discovery helps bring the gospel alive, the context of Jewish practice. The archaeologists excavating the site are with the Israeli government's Antiquities Authority and they found biblical era coins marked with ancient Jewish writing along with pottery shards and a stone bottle cork helping them confirm that the area was the Siloam pool. The stone line pool has steps leading into it from all sides, said Ronnie Reich, University of Haifa archaeologist. One side of the pool, two corners and a part of the esplanade around it and the water channel leading to it have been uncovered. Jesus, according to the New Testament, put the clay on the blind man's eyes and then sent him to wash them out in the pool's purifying waters, giving him sight. Jews who traditionally made three pilgrimages a year to Jerusalem would immerse themselves in the Siloam pool. 
before heading down the stone pathway to the temple. They also used the pool for drinking water and camped around it. And that should be corrected. It's, they didn't head down the pathway. They went up the pathway. Jesus was a pilgrim in Jerusalem, so this would be a natural place for him to be enjoying the water supply. And when I show you the pictures of this, keep in mind that what you are looking at, these stone steps going down into the pool, is what Jesus stood on, saw with his own eyes. You are looking where he looked. You are seeing what he saw. The exact same place, the stairs going down into the pool and the area up above the esplanade. The Israeli Antiquities Authority is negotiating with the Greek Orthodox Church, which owns the land, to continue the dig. Archaeologists believe the pool is under the thick green covering of an overgrown vegetable garden and several large trees. So they are getting this permission from the Greek Orthodox Church to now dig that part out that has had the garden over it for 2,000 years time. And isn't it ironic that this is happening right at the time that they're talking about the Messiah soon to be revealed? So this leads to something else here. And it's his nine foot tall, three meter tall stone walls topped by old sewage and drainage pipes separate the new discovery and the pool stone steps uncovered in the 1960s. Now archaeologists hope to remove the old pipes and connect the esplanade and water channel to the steps that lead into the pool. Here we can judge and see how large it is, the grandeur of the city in those days, Reich said. Now what's really neat about it is that the pool still has the water running in it and part of it is rainwater coming down from the sky and part of it is coming from the Gihon Spring. And a friend of mine in Israel sent me a jar of the water in the pool of Shiloh or Siloam where the blind man had his eyes healed by Jesus. So I have this little jar of this water and of course it's probably in the storage units where it's probably frozen. In December of 2013, BibleWalks.com reported Recent excavations in the area of City of David have revealed a section of an ancient ritual pool dating from the Second Temple period east of the traditional Byzantine period pool, which was known to date. The pool supported the pilgrims to the temple who purified themselves before ascending to the Temple Mount via a wide Herodian street which started from the pool. In John 9:11, it's written, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. The location of the Shiloh pool and other sites in the area of the city of David are shown in an aerial view and after the death of the Assyrian king Sargon II, 705 BC, King Hezekiah, son of King Ahaz, mutinied against the Assyrians, joining other cities in the area who attempted to free themselves from the Assyrian conquest. Anticipating the coming Assyrian intrusion, he fortified Jerusalem and other major cities. In um, Hezekiah, who was the king, 716 to 687 BC, prepared Judea on the eve of the Assyrian intrusion. Among other works, he constructed a tunnel from the Gihon Spring to the Shiloh Pool, blocking the old Canaanite water course in order to prevent the waters of the Gihon to be used by the enemy. The Bible recorded the historical events leading to the construction of the tunnel, which gave it the common name Hezekiah's Tunnel, 
2 Chronicles 32, 2-4. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? The tunnel brought the spring waters into the walls of the city of David rather than flowing out to the Kidron. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gihon and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. The tunnel project is also summarized in Hezekiah's biblical obituary, 2 Kings 2020. And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might, and how he made a pool and a conduit. This Hezekiah tunnel starts from the source, the Gihon Spring. It was cut into the rock, leading the water along the eastern hill to the Shiloh Pool, which was inside the fortified city. An earlier channel existed in the Canaanite period with an outlet to the Kidron Valley and it was extended southwards at the 8th century BC perhaps by Hezekiah or earlier. The Hezekiah tunnel is still functioning feeding the pool. You can walk along the winding wet tunnel 533 meters long from the Gihon Spring to the Shiloh Byzantine period pool. The height difference between the source and the destination is 30 centimeters. An inscription was found on a wall of the tunnel from the entrance of the tunnel at the Shiloh pool. And this inscription, six lines of ancient Hebrew script carved in the limestone rock, was one of the important findings of biblical archaeology in the 19th century. And it was found in 1880 and brought to Istanbul where it is on display. The Shiloh or Siloam inscription tells the story of the tunnel and how the two teams of diggers met after cutting the tunnel on both ends. And it says this, when the tunnel was driven through, and this was the way in which it was cut through, while blank were still blank axes each man toward his fellow, and while there were still three cubits to be cut through, there was heard the voice of a man calling to his fellow, for there was an overlap in the rock on the right and on the left, and when the tunnel was driven through, the quarrymen hewed the rock, each man towards his fellow, axe against axe, and the water flowed from the spring toward the reservoir for 1,200 cubits, and the height of the rock above the head of the quarrymen was 100 cubits. So it's the Siloam inscription. The Bible also implies that Shiloh is the lower pool while Gihon is the upper pool. Here are several verses, Gihon in 2 Kings 1817 and they went up and came to Jerusalem and when they were come up they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool which is in the highway of the fuller's field Shiloh in Isaiah 22 9 ye have seen also that the breaches of the city of David that they are many and ye gathered together the waters of the lower pool ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool the Assyrian army came in 701, leading Sennacherib, son of Sargon II. Jerusalem was spared this time, saved by Hezekiah's preparations and the destruction of the army by God's angels. King Manasseh, son of Hezekiah, reigned 687 to 643 BC. He continued to prepare the city for the Assyrians' return. Now after this he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley even to the entering inn at the fish gate and compassed about Ophel and raised it up a very great height and put captains of water in all the fenced cities of Judah. Then when Nehemiah came back from captivity he also rebuilt when Nehemiah came back from the captivity he rebuilt the pool of Shiloh, 
located at the bottom of the stairs that go down from the city of David. And that says, But the gate of the fountain repaired Shalon, the son of Kolhoza, the ruler of part of Mizpah. He built it and covered it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Siloach by the king's garden and unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. The king's garden was probably located near the crossing of the Kidron Valley and the valley of the Cheesemongers, which was the Tyropian Valley, which descends from the west side of the temple. Evidence of an earlier pool dated to the late Hasmonean period or the early Herodian period was found during the excavation of the newly discovered Second Temple period Shiloh pool. Under the pavement and steps of the Herodian period was a lower layer of plaster. And then Herod the Great, king of Israel under the Romans, 37 BC to 4 BC, enlarged and rebuilt the Second Temple and made it a magnificent temple. Herod reshaped the city, reconstructed and constructed public houses, streets, bridges, tunnels, and fortifications. And Herod constructed the Shiloh Pool where the pilgrims would purify themselves. A wide-stepped road descending from the pool to the south side of the temple, passing between residential houses and shops on both sides of the road. A model of the Herodian city has been made and shown, and that's part of their focus. Josephus Flavius describes this topography in Wars 541. Now the Valley of the Cheesemongers, as it was called, and was that which we told you before, distinguished the hill of the upper city from that of the lower, extended as far as Siloam, for that is the name of a fountain which has sweet water in it, and this is great plenty also. But on the outsides, these hills are surrounded by deep valleys, and by reason of the precipices to them belonging on both sides, they are everywhere unpassable. He describes the south side in Wars 542. But if we go the other way westward, it began at the same place and extended through a place called Bethso to the gate of the Essenes. After that, it went southward, having its bending above the fountain Siloam, where it also bends again towards the east at Solomon's Pool, and reaches as far as a certain place which they called Ophlis, where it was joined to the eastern cloister of the temple. The Shiloh Pool is mentioned by Jesus as an example of a tragic story, while comparing it to the sudden death of Galileans in Luke 13, 2-4. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? Jesus also heals the blind man in the holy waters of the pool in John 9. 11. He answered and said, A man that's called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Following the great revolt, the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD, raising the temple and the city of David. They destroyed the Shiloh pool and the Herodian street that ascended from it. The pool was buried by silt that accumulated almost over 2,000 years to heights of up to four meters. So it's buried that deep and has been all this time. After the destruction of Jerusalem, the Jewish population revolted again 60 years later, headed by Bar Kokhba. A major cause of this revolt was the plans of the Roman Emperor Hadrian to build Jerusalem as the pagan city of Aelia Capitolina. After the Romans subdued the revolt, years 131 through 135, the city was rebuilt as a Roman city. During the 5th century, a Byzantine church was built at the site of the new site of the Siloam Pool, located closer to the edge of the tunnel. 
The pool was incorporated into the church complex. The church commemorating the miracle of the healing of the blind man was probably established by Empress Aelia Eudocia Augusta, 401 to 460 AD, wife of the East Roman Emperor Theodosius II, who visited the Holy Land and constructed other monasteries in the 400s AD. The church was leveled in the Middle Ages, replaced by a mosque, which stands over its ruins. A minaret tower is seen here on the late 19th century photo, northwest of the remains of the Byzantine pool. Remains of the church were found under the mosque. So this was a tragedy of corruption by the Muslims. In the book Jerusalem in Bible Times, Chapter 3, The Springs and Pools of Ancient Jerusalem, Lewis Patton describes the spring and pool of Siloam, or Shiloh, as follows. In Silwan lies the junction of the Middle Valley El Wad, B.W. Hinnom, with Wadi City Mariam, Kidron, in spite of its name, it is not a true spring since it is fed by the tunnel from the Virgin's Fountain, Gion Spring. In the Jerusalem volume of the Palestine Exploration Fund, page 345, the Siloam Pool, which is photographed on the right pictures, is described as a small pool receiving the waters from Hezekiah's tunnel. And it said, the present pool consists of modern masonry measuring 55 feet north and south by 18 feet east and west, having its bottom of a, at a level of 2,086 feet above the Mediterranean. The average depth is 20 feet, and on the north, an archway 5 feet wide appears, leading to a small vault 12 feet long, in which is a descent from the level of the top of the pool to the level of the channel supplying it. This vault is modern and the old mouth of the rock cut channel has been stopped up on the east side of the present pool the water now being admitted farther west under the vault recent explorations dr guthrie proved that the pool was originally much larger and cut in rock on the east it probably extended to the present rocky scarp in which a channel was now cut connecting with a lower pool formed by a strong masonry dam at the mouth of the Tyropian where it opens into the Kidron Valley. The date of the masonry of this dam, which is about 100 yards southeast of the pool, is unknown, but it is extremely massive and probably of great antiquity. The, to the south of the pool is a larger area which collected the surplus of waters from the Siloam Pool. The lower pool is now known as Birkat El Hamra, the Red Pool. It has lately been fenced with a high wall for use as a garden, and the water of the upper pool no longer flows into it. The author of the book did not know that 100 years later, the ancient Herodian pool will be found under the mud of the Red Pool. The location of the old pool of Shiloh was forgotten and the scholars assumed that it was buried under the Byzantine pool at the outlet of the tunnel. For 2,000 years, the ancient pool was hidden under the ground. However, as it happens in many important archaeological discoveries, it was found by chance. The archaeologist Eli Shukron was watching a team of workers trying to repair a drainage pipeline near the south side of the ridge of the city of David, east of the Byzantine Shylock Pool. Their tractor hit some of the slabs and the archaeologist stopped the work and summoned his colleague Ronnie Reich. They continued to peel off more of the soil and revealed a section of the steps of an ancient pool dated to the Second Temple period. After extensive cleaning followed by conservation operations, the full extent of the northern section of the pool was revealed, although most of the pool is still covered due to digging restrictions in the area. The plan and approximate dating of the pool is known. The archaeologist also found evidence of an earlier pool dated to the late Hasmonean period, which was an earlier phase of the construction. The Second Temple Pool. 
The second pool was discovered on the lower east side of the Byzantine pool. A team of workers were digging to repair the drainage pipe and struck a section of the pool. This photo shows the current October 2013 status of the excavated pool. A black pipe was laid over the edge of the site as a temporary bypass. And it says the pool covers the entire area of the modern garden at an estimated size of three quarters of an acre. The majority of the pool is still covered by a garden, which is a property of the Greek Orthodox Church. After the destruction of the city in 70 AD, the pool ceased to function, was filled with earth, and disappeared from sight until 2004, when it was rediscovered. And that is so extraordinary. The Shiloh Pool has a near rectangular design with steps built around its peripheral. There are three sets of five steps each. Between the two upper sets is a landing area while the lower set reaches the level of the bottom of the pool. This design accommodated different water levels. The pool design allowed tens of thousands of pilgrims to step down into the pool, dip into its holy waters, purify themselves, wrap in new clothes, then walk up to the Temple Mount. Although dozens of baptismal f facilities exist around the walls of the Temple, those facilities could not cleanse the vast amount of pilgrims during the three major holidays. On the side of the pool is a section of the water channel. Behind it, on the unseen face of the cliff, was an outlet of the southern Shiloh Channel that brought the waters from the Gion Spring to another pool located inside the walls of the first Temple Period city. The covered water channel leading to the reservoir is shown in their photograph. The archaeological excavations yielded additional findings. One of the interesting artifacts found in the drainage canal excavation on the north side of the pool was a tiny golden bell which may have been part of the robes of a high priest. Another find included an engraved menorah. Eli Shukran tells about his discovery of the pool in Herodian Street and findings during the excavation. The archaeologists continued to dig to the north of the pool and revealed a section of the ancient plaza, Herodian Street, and central drainage channel. A section west of the pool was an earth where a colonnaded promenade was standing, giving shelter to the pilgrims. A painting along the wall illustrates how the pool would have been seen in ancient times from this covered plaza. Several sections of the columns were discovered at the site. A drainage stone also located is in the pavement. The underground channel also served as a hiding place for the remaining Jewish rebels during the last days of the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, holes punctured into the pavements are visible signs of the attempts of the legionnaires, the Romans, to locate the rebels and their families hiding under the paved street. A Roman sword and its leather scabbard was found inside the channel, an evidence of the Roman search. Josephus wrote about this tragic hide-and-seek in War 6-9-4. Romans slew some of them, some they carried captives, and others they made a search for underground. And when they found where they were, they broke up the ground and slew all they met with. His account of the desperate struggle of the Jews following the destruction of the city really comes alive here. Eli Shukran tells about his discovery of the Herodian Street and the drainage channel under it. He first dug into the drainage channel looking for channels that led into the pool and while looking up to the ceiling he noticed the bottom of the paving stones of the stepped road. And now let me show you the pictures of this. This is so extraordinary to think that this was this was hidden until our time 
And do you realize what this means? That they're now going to excavate what has been buried under the garden for 2,000 years? And God only knows what they're going to find. But think about the fact that God said that Israel, in part, has been blinded until the times the Gentiles have come in. Could it be that God saved the excavation of the pool where the man that was born blind was made to see at the time that God is going to allow the Jews to begin to see who he is? And maybe this is why the pool of Siloam is going to be excavated and then Israel will start having their eyes unblinded to the fact that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah and their King. So let's have a look at these steps that you would take from the pool to go heading up towards the temple after you took your mikvah bath. As long as I am in the world, 
I am the light of the world. So now here is the update and I saved this from December 27th, 2022 and it said in Israel 365 News that the biblical pool of Siloam next to the Temple Mount is to be fully excavated. The ancient pool of Siloam, Shiloh in Hebrew, first mentioned in the biblical book of 2 Kings will be fully excavated and open to the public. The Israeli Antiquities Authority announced Tuesday. 
The structure is located just outside the walls of Jerusalem's old city to the southeast. The Pool of Siloam in the City of David National Park in Jerusalem is a site of historic national and international significance, said Jerusalem Mayor Moshe Lyon. After many years of anticipation, we will soon merit being able to uncover this important site and make it accessible to the millions of visitors visiting Jerusalem each year. During the Second Temple period, millions of pilgrims coming from outside of Jerusalem used the pool as a ritual bath or mikvah before ascending to the Temple Mount through what archaeologists have dubbed as the Pilgrimage Road, the city's main street that led directly to the sanctuary. By that point, the pool, which was the city's main water source, had been renovated and expanded to reach its largest size, approximately one and one quarter acres. It's huge. According to the Bible, the structure was first built under King Hezekiah some 2,700 years ago. The other events of Hezekiah's reign and all his exploits and how he made the pool and the conduit and brought the water into the city are recorded in the annals of the kings of Yehuda, read 2 Kings 2020. A crucial archaeological discovery unearthed in 1880 also testifies to the importance of the site. An inscription in the Hebrew script from the 8th century BCE recorded that the Gihon Springs water was diverted to the pool during the reign of King Hezekiah. The pool is also mentioned in the Gospel of John as the site where Jesus healed the blind man. Now, we're coming up upon the time when the Jews are saying the Messiah is at hand and is going to be revealed. And of course, we have Rabbi Kaduri's prophetic words that we are at the time now where things have been fulfilled that he said and that the Messiah is soon to be revealed. Excavated multiple times over the course of the decades, the pool was partially exposed in 2004 during works on Jerusalem's water infrastructure. The IAA excavation that followed under the direction of Professors Ronnie Reich and Eli Shukran uncovered the northern perimeter as well as a small portion of the eastern perimeter of the Pool of Siloam. Visitors will now be able to observe the excavations and eventually visit the pool as part of a route starting at the southernmost point of the city of David and ending at the footsteps of the Western Wall, the same route that Jewish pilgrims walked 2,000 years ago. Do you mean to tell me that this is any kind of coincidence, the timing? We're talking that this is about to be excavated fully for the first time in 2,000 years. This pool where all the millions of people took a mikvah before going up to the temple. And now we're right before the building of the third temple. And we're expecting the Messiah to appear at any moment. And Jesus said that Israel's eyes would be blinded in part until the times of the Gentiles come in. The times of the Gentiles, are they about up? And Jesus is going to remove the blindness of his people at the time that the pool where the blind man was had his eyes healed from blindness at birth? And are we going to see Israel's eyes unblinded as to the identity that Jesus, Yeshua, is their king and their Messiah, the king that restores the Davidic dynasty forever? And this pool where Jesus cured the blind man's eyes, <laughs> Israel's eyes are about to be healed from their blindness of 2,000 years, a time period of the diaspora to allow the Gentiles to come in so that now the Lord is going to finish the prophetic words written by the prophet Daniel for Israel. And mystery, Babylon the Great, is Israel. This is why the church will be gone. Israel is mystery, Babylon the Great, in the book of Revelation, as I went into detail in my prior video. 
It's something that astonished me. I never saw it all my life until the Holy Spirit began revealing piece by piece from the scriptures. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. But this is how it's going to go down. They're going to set an earthly king on that throne. And we think that because of all the things I told you in my past videos, that this is probably going to be King Charles III. There could be a possibility it could be the King of Jordan or Muhammad bin Salman. It's somebody who's a king, though. And let me please tell you that that Yannicka story is a fake story that people ran with. There's no Hanukkah Yannicka. It's a fake story. They're not looking to him in Israel as their Messiah at all. What they're going to do is they're going to put somebody who is anointed as the anointed one as a king. And that is going to be King Charles III, I believe. Plus, he's going to be the head of the whole green movement, the whole climate change agenda to bring the carbon footprint down to net zero because that's their worldwide plan of global governance. So that's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jesus is going to return to sit on the throne of David forever, and they're going to see him, and he's going to take the blindness off their eyes, because they've been blinded in part in order for the Gentiles to come in, to be grafted in to the original tree, which is Israel. How thrilling and what timing for God to start removing the blindness of their eyes at the time that the pool where the blind man's eyes were healed and he could see. He could see the Messiah with his own eyes that had just healed him. He saw Yeshua and it was revealed to him when he saw him with his own eyes. And you are looking at pictures of the very steps that Jesus would have walked down to be in that pool that the blind man that he healed was in and washed his eyes in. You are looking at the steps that Jesus not only walked on, but he looked at. And we're looking at what he saw that day. I am just totally stunned. And the parallel of Israel having their eyes that have been partially blinded until the fullness of Gentiles comes in and having the pool fully excavated in the coming months at the time the third temple is going to be built and the return of Jesus so that they can see who their king is. <laughs> wow, you could not even make this story up at all. <laughs> the timing, can you imagine that pool? has been buried, no telling what they're going to find in that dirt that's four meters deep. I mean, it's exciting. Wouldn't you love to be an excavator or an archaeologist there? So anyway, I wanted to bring you this story several days ago, but like I said, I've just been working like a dog trying to move this stuff from the catastrophic flooding that happened with the burst pipes. So anyway, Thank you, thank you for uh, support of my channel. It's very much needed, and especially now, things are very tough. I don't have my car back from the shop yet. Didn't have it all through the holiday, and then I had this uh, burst pipes episode happen. So uh, my, my links are Kimberly K. Ballard, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N I W O T, Colorado, 80544. But the most direct way to help me is paypal.me slash K K R O C O C O. That's paypal.me slash K K R O C O C O. That's K K Rococo. So that's where you can help me out the most, and I really appreciate it, and I appreciate um, 
The one letter that I got over all of these holidays was from Ira Beam. Thank you so much. And Susan from England, I just got your package. I had not been able to go out to my mailbox. When I finally got there, there was only one letter in it. And I got a notice there was a package, but they did not give me a key. So I couldn't get it until um, last night. And I'm just going to say, we got rain and we got very heavy snow. The snow was three inches under my knee. So it was very, very deep, heavy, wet snow. And I'm just um, hopefully in a place where no more water is going to come down from the ceiling. Thank you for keeping me in your prayers all this time. I'm sorry I didn't get to do any videos to update you or till now, but maybe I'll make a video out of the clips of what actually happened. Although I didn't get a picture of the gully washer coming down from the ceiling because I had to run to the room through the water to, to see what was ruined and all. And um, I thought sprinklers were going off in my room, but fortunately they didn't. And it was just out in the entryway, and the ceiling is starting to uh, collapse and crumble right in that spot. So they're going to be having to do work down there. Anyway, please, please keep me in your prayers. I have got to be able to afford to get out of this place and to get a home. Can you believe all of my belongings were in minus 15 degree weather? So no telling what condition my recordings are in. But uh, I just thank everybody that's prayed and people that continued to pray even when I didn't come on and for a couple of people that gave me donations. Thank you to those. So good night for now. Love and peace. Out. <laughs>